In this episode, we will deep dive into another concurrency pattern, fan out fan in. The fan out fan in pattern is used to achieve parallelism in tasks that can be broken down into smaller independent tasks. This pattern is especially useful in Go due to its first class support for concurrency with goroutines and channels. We'll explore how to implement the pattern using an example of image transformation. First, let us understand how this pattern works. Suppose there are four steps to the process where the output of step 1 goes to step 2 as input and so on. Now say, if step number 2 takes a lot of time, it, kind of, slows down the whole process. If this step can be broken down into multiple independent steps, we can run them in parallel. This process of breaking down the step is called fan out. Collecting the results together is called fan in. Without further ado, let's see how this works in code. Here we have an example where we read a bunch of images, resize them, and then write to the drive. This piece of code is sequential and has no concurrency. We will use fan out fan in pattern to make the resize step concurrent. We have these four images under Images folder. These images are of size 1536 by 1536. In the main function, the image paths variable holds the list of paths of the input images. The first step is to load the images in memory. Then, resize the images in the second step. In the final step, save the images on the disk. Let's look at the function load image. Before this, let's take a look at the job struct. This struct is created to keep the context of the job across the steps. It defines the input path, the image itself and the output path. The load image function takes paths of the images as input and returns a list of jobs. Here we declare a variable jobs, which is a list of job struct. We loop over the paths. In this loop, we create a new job. This job's input path is set and then the output path is set. The output path is set to the output folder in the images folder. Next, we read the image from the path and set the image in the job. Append the job to the jobs list. In the end, return jobs. The next step is resizing the image. The resize function takes a pointer to the list of jobs as an argument. We loop over the jobs. We resize the image and assign it to the image variable in the job. The last step is to save the images on the disk. In this function, loop over jobs and write the images on the disk. In this code, we have used methods to read, write and resize the image. These methods are defined in the image processing package. In this package, we use these packages to perform these actions. There are three functions, read image, write image and resize image. The resize function resizes the image to 500 by 500 pixels. Let's run the program. In the output folder, these images are created. These images are of size 500 by 500. Now on a large scale, resizing images will be a much more expensive solution than the other two operations of reading and writing the files. 
Let's change our code to make the operation of resizing images concurrent. For this, we will break resize into multiple goroutines. This is also called fanout. After the resize operation, we will collect the results for the next step. This collection is called fan in. We will use a channel between fan out and fan in as a way to communicate. Let's make changes to the resize method. This method will return a channel of type job. First, create a new buffered channel called out. It is of type job struct and the length of the channel is equal to the number of jobs. Now loop over jobs. Here, we will create goroutines for each job. In each goroutine, we resize the image into job.image. Now place this job on the channel, out. Pass job in the goroutine. Finally return the channel. This function returns a channel. Let's collect it in a variable. Here, we have fanned out. Now, we will write a function to collect the jobs back from the out channel. This represents fanning in. Let's create a new function, collect jobs. This will take the channel as input. Along with this, it also needs the count of images. Declare a variable resize jobs. This will be used to collect the jobs from the channel. Now loop over image count. Read the job from the input channel. Append the job in resized jobs array. And in the end, return the array of jobs, resized jobs. This is how we collect the jobs back from the channel. Call this function in the main function. Now pass the resized jobs to the next step. Let's run the program again. It resized the images. This example is very primitive. The purpose was to explain the pattern. The real-world scenarios are more complex and require us to use this pattern along with other patterns like worker pool or pipeline. We have explained these patterns in other episodes. Do check them out. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more programming insights. Until next time, happy coding!